Hello everyone, and welcome back to another day of the StarCast TV Star League. We are in the final round of 16. It is Mini versus Barracks and Terran versus Protoss. This should be a good series. Mini, he's the multitask god. Anytime you watch his stream, it's it's crazy how, how good he is. Like, he's attacking like three, four, five areas while also dropping you at the same time. Absolutely insane. But he's going to be going up against somebody that's also very quick on the gun. It is Barracks. Barracks, he's generally some, somebody like around a 16 ASL type of player. But he's really freaking good, man. Like, one of the things that stands out to me from Barracks is that after he makes an attack in Terran versus Protoss, he instantly unseages. There's no screwing around. No, 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 no. He instantly unseages and will pounce on expansion after expansion instantly. Ter I've seen him play versus Protoss players where Protoss has like six bases. You look away for about 30 seconds and all of a sudden Protoss is down to three. Like that's how quick he is to knock down bases. So this could be an exciting series. We do get a look at the bracket. As we all know, we've got Rush versus Soma, an epic TVZ coming up, Best versus Beast. That's going to be a great ZVP matchup. I'm looking forward to the most is Royal versus Snow because Royal just absolutely killer uh, these days snow op, absolute god in pvt and it's a rematch of the asl from last season where royal got the best of him and we do have light sitting in the bottom side so the winner is going to face off versus light so whoever comes out of here is going to have their work cut out for him because light another asl champion very very strong very very deadly in all matchups so we really just want to know what are the maps going to be. And we do have Jungle Story as our first map. I don't think it's any surprise that Mini picks this map. You you got to favor him on maps like this where there's a lot of potential drops, you know, a lot of weirdness. And then also considering that most likely Barracks doesn't have a lot of experience on here. So not surprised to see the pick coming in for Mini. And then we've got Polypoid and Champion. Again, no surprise there. I think Polypoid is probably most players' favorite map to play, other than maybe Vermeer, but that got banned. And then Champion, so a two-player map. I already think that this is somewhat favored towards Mini, just because of I see I see the map picks. So let's get into the first game. It is going to be Jungle Story, a map that we haven't seen uh, that many times. And I think it may actually be our... I was going to say our first Terran versus Protoss, but I don't think that's correct. I think we saw Sock versus Snow here. Uh, so it will be our second one. So yeah, let's get into it. We've got Mini in the top right. And in the bottom right, we do have Derek. So we've got Vertical Pond here. One of the intricacies of this map is, of course, mains are on the low ground. Naturals are on the high ground. But, you know, Tempest in the map pool has that type of that dynamic so a lot of recent experience for both players to play on maps like this so because of that i don't expect to see you know let's say mini you know catching barracks off guard with an overwhelming amount of zealots and then securing the high ground and barracks just can't ever get out right like i, I don't feel like that's gonna happen but maybe i'm already wrong because we've got a forward pylon coming down and most likely you know what that means this is probably gonna be proxy gate or forward gate could also be 12 nexus we'll see what mini opts into the fact that the probe hasn't stuck around i think this signals that this could be 12 nexus but nope he just wanted a little bit more mining and now he rallies his probe back to the natural so we're gonna have a 10 gate instead of something like a 9 gate barracks well his barracks is pretty far forward it is on the high ground and it looks like that's going to be for gasless expand but this could already be a disaster for him probe is going to scout him first we know that the zealot is going to be coming really quick and i don't think you're going to have command center depot in time versus the forward gate so the sim city is going to be really lacking and also because he's been scouted so fast barracks may feel like well i can't gasless anymore i may have to just go for 12 gas we've got a probe already knocking 30 health off of that SCV. This is not looking good for Barracks. He's, oh no, 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 he's gonna lose it. Oh my gosh, the turnaround shot, the fadeaway probe hit, and this is a disaster 
for barracks. Losing the SCV, now he's got a weird build with 14 gas or 13 gas, whatever it was. And Zealot is going to be coming across the map pretty quickly. Now, Mini's gone for an interesting follow-up. Instead of it being goon pressure, he's just going to expand behind this. He knows that the command center has been disrupted for a long time. He knows that unless this guy was going for gas immediately, his factory time is going to be late. So what can Terran really do to punish? Well, the answer is not much. So he's just going to go for a Nexus. And I got to say, that right there, I was not expecting to see. <laughs> We're going to have Marine Medic, probably, from, from Barracks here. But Mini... He's most likely building multiple Zealots. I could see him trying to force the issue here and trying to get a kill onto these Marines and walking into the main and scouting this. So it is, in, it is imperative that this does not get scouted. And this really does look like, from what Barracks has shown, that this was just a delayed factory or you know, a 12 gas factory. Nothing here signals that, hey, there could be a hidden second barracks behind here. I, I guess I technically didn't see if the academy started just yet, but I'm assuming that there is an academy. Is that an academy? Okay, doesn't actually seem like it is an academy. It's just going to be non-stop marines, no medics, he's not even mining gas. Interesting, not sure if I've seen this before. Uh, okay, I saw a slight move out, but there's two zealots. Yeah, you can't do this. Zealots. We're going to get focused down, but they've already done a lot of damage. Ooh, if he had gotten that third Marine, I think that could have been enough to keep Barracks hesitant from attacking. But instead, okay, we've got a full SCV pull plus Marines rallied. So we are not screwing around. Here we go. This is going to be a quick game. Either Mini's going to hold or Barracks is just going to steal this game. And he already knows something's up because he's got a battery coming. I don't know what he saw that triggered it, but he's right. He needs that battery. The bunker goes down, but it's an, it's instantly surrounded. Second Zealot pops out, the battery completes, and there's not that many Marines. It, it's six Marines, which is decent, but it's not a lot. SCV's being pulled. Can they get in position? Oh, oh, that was really good. He blocks off the second Zealot, blocks off the probes, and Barracks, is he gonna do it? He gonna steal this game, but just rally Marines and SCVs? Well, in Mini's main, he, he should still be mining decent. I don't even know if this is enough. Like, I don't think you can sit here and just be content with taking the Nexus. You gotta get, get down into the main and knock this down. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's going for it all. He wants everything. Another battery coming. Oh, man. There, okay, there's a ton of Marines now. But he, he's left vision up for the drilling of the probes. Probe got a really good drill. They got a really good drill. Oh my gosh, disaster. What a disaster. The probe saved the day there with the drill. None of the Marines get into the bunker. And these three Marines that were rallied, they were not rallied to the ramp. Oh, this is a heartbreaking way to lose your push. The range is, I would say, probably halfway done. I guess we really don't know exactly how close it is being done, but this is still razor thin. The probe, are now, oh, second, second boon pops out. I think with the second boon popping out, Probably it. Oh, the battery clutching it right there. Another clutch clutch heal, but one of the goons ends up dying, actually. Protoss is still mining, though. He still has his gate up. It's not been taken down. Looks like range is not done just yet. You really got to continue to push the issue as barracks here. Can't allow multiple goons to get out because uh, just having goons constantly attack the bunker. Uh, it's going to oh, oh, Okay, here we go. He's going to try and knock it down before range is completed. Looks like range did complete. Second goon should be popping out just a moment, and it does. And then we let off another marine. Man, the SCVs are still alive though, so they can prepare forever. Oh, he sees, he knocks down another SCV. Yeah, there you go. He's doing exactly what you need to do, which is kill off these SCVs. He's gotten them really low on health. Like, oh, they can get knocked down pretty quickly. And is that an academy? It is an academy. But Barracks pulled so many SCVs for this, his econ is really lacking. Meanwhile, you can see Mini's got a ton of gas. He doesn't need mine gas anymore. He just put back on to minerals. But the problem is, is that these Marines are gonna die, most likely. There's still two goons out. There's still vision. 
for Protoss, so he can see this bunker, which means he can still range it. But it is on high ground, so I guess maybe it would be hard to get taken down. Oh, almost got it. Almost got the SCP. I can't lose that soon. No attacks off. And it does seem like maybe... Maybe he will be able to hold high ground here. He doesn't need that many SCPs to prepare. Because of the mischance. But what is Mini's follow-up going to be? Because he's got a lot of gas, like I mentioned. He's got more workers, too. So the Econ is still fine. He is going to go into... Re-replay, most likely. I guess it could also just be for a shuttle and elevator and come in. Because he has a second game, maybe that's the most likely play. And Barracks, I would say he didn't do enough damage. Yes, he did a lot. Yes, he's gonna kill the natural. But the problem is, is he has no tech at all. He doesn't have a medic even yet. I don't think he has range yet. Oh, wow, he gets one of the goons. That was nice. But he doesn't have a factory. Like... Marine Medic, it's like a one and done type of thing. You've got to really end the game with it because there's no follow-up. Like, once a Reaver comes out, you've got to be a micro god to not just lose everything. And I feel like even though it looks like Barracks is in an okay spot right now, having no and stuff, he's just, there's just no mid-game for him. Whereas once the shuttle gets out and once the Reaver gets out, you're going to have a lot of powerful units as Protoss with the team. Medic finally gets shown. And actually, if I was seeing this as mini, I'd be happy to see it as Medic. Because that means that, oh, hey, maybe not. Maybe I'm not happy, because we're just stimming in here. Whoa. I, w I was expecting it to be for range and just hold the ramp, but instead he's stimming in and he's mowing down Marine after Marine. He's saying, I am not done with this push, bro. There goes that goon. See you later. Now, there are only two Medics, but I don't think it matters. Okay, okay, dude. He's just mowing down everything. Tons of probes have fallen. Did the shuttle die? I think that, no, the shuttle did not die. So the shuttle is still alive, but is there support? Okay, there is support at the top side. So it all comes down to the Reaver. The Reaver has gotten out, and despite dealing critical damage to the probe line and the goon count, one Reaver is game changing, and the battery is still alive too. That means that this Reaver is pretty much immortal. And what I thought may have ended the game ends up not ending the game outright. And now we're still stuck in that predicament where we have Marine Medic. No factory just yet. But Protoss can't move out. He's got to defend. Anytime he moves out, he, he, he risks being countered like this. Loses the goon. Looks like he's going to lose all the Marines here. Nope. Oh, ends up saving one of them. And he saves three Medics. Like, this is really good. From, from Barracks, he's maximizing the amount of damage and keeping the Reaver back is all he needs to do because if he can stabilize, start building out tanks, start building out Wraith, he's fine. Like he's up so many workers and it does seem like he's actually gonna get to that point in the game because I saw that the starport's about to finish. In fact, he's already done. So he's gonna have a tank by the time the Reaver gets across the map and he has Marines with Stim versus a shuttle that's extremely slow. So he has potential to snipe the shuttle. So this is actually a winning position for Barracks. I don't know if Mini can come back from a deficit like this. He's only, if he had eight goons here, I think he wins. But with it only being two, I don't think so, man. There's still no bunker at the natural though. Reaver is extremely scary, but Barracks feels like he can hold it. There's a Reaver trying to hold the line in the main. We'll see what can happen. Not a lot of firepower. Well, I mean, I, I guess there is a lot of firepower with the Reaver, but not a lot of support. I mean, we've got an attack at the main of Mini right now. It looks like they stemmed in and most likely died. Actually, there's four or two Zealots, two Goons, and a Reaver here, and there's only one tank. Did Barracks mess up? He may have messed up. Now I've just got SCDs, a single tank, and a single raid trying to save the day. Two goons are still alive. Reaver's still alive. Tank is out no man's landing with a zealot now. Terran has eight SCVs. What a game. 
What a crazy game! The goons are still alive, siege mode is done. But the worker count is non-existent. He's gonna lose that tank. Oh my gosh, he doesn't lose the tank to the flash. Well done. But he lost, what, 16 workers there? Mini has 17 workers. So he's up nine, eight, nine workers right now. He's still got his Reaver. He's still got Coons in his main. He's still got his shuttle. He's, I would say, even in tech. And he's just up eight workers. I mean, this is a fantastic position now for Mini. The counterplay from Barracks was clearly a mistake. If he had swooped around behind the Reaver and just, you know, pincered it in with a massive flank, maybe he would have overwhelmed it. Because you got to remember, the, the shuttle is still, uh, still has no speed. Like, it's different if the shuttle has speed and can run away. But no speed shuttle, you sim into it and you just pop that thing. And it looks like Barracks just kind of blundered it a little bit, which is unfortunate because obviously... Anybody that's watched my stream knows I'm a huge fan of punishing Protoss players with Marine Medic. But it looks like Barracks has been gotten, and unless this push can work, or unless this push ends the game, uh, most likely this is many team to take at this point. The Reaver's gonna load at the main, there's no units. You can't turn your stuff around, it's too late for that. Shuttle. Well, the Reaver's kind of bugging out a little bit, but here we go. This is the death push. Can Barracks end it with this play? It does seem like it. that speed is now kicked in for the shuttle. Four dudes on the high ground. They're one-shotting those Marines. Is going to have to back off, though. Going to retreat back into his main. There's no Reaver there. The shuttle actually does not have speed. Okay. There's no, there's no goon anymore, so the Wraith technically can win the fight over time. If you lose the shuttle, dude! If you lose the shuttle, how can you use it with your Reaver coming out of your Robo? You can't win this fight with just the Reaver with no shuttle. Well, maybe he can because he has the battery. Uh, well, those units are so clumped up and the tank instantly dies. And he pops out. What a crazy game that was. Obviously, I was wrong on a lot of these calls. It was so back and forth. It looked like both players had opportunities to win the game. I think the player with the best opportunity to win was Barracks coming, if he had come around instead of counterattacking with his huge marine medic ball, I think he definitely could have shut down the Reaver immediately. Then he would have had a massive army plus tanks plus race versus a player that doesn't have a second shuttle, doesn't have a second Reaver, uh, and probably could have pushed to victory or at least bunker pushed to victory. But you know, Murray medic is a wild comp. It's very volatile comp. And when you're on a like that you always feel like oh I got it I got to kill him now I got to kill him now I got to kill him now so don't alt him for going for the counter attack but what an immaculate defense and clutch play for mini there with the goon control reaver control and especially that probe uh, drill onto the natural so well done from him he's gonna go up 1-0 in the series uh, let's get into game two we're gonna be on a more modern map now we're going into polypoid so both players should be more comfortable on this and I don't expect this <laughs> like we just saw for sure. So in the top right down on the one, it is Barracks. And meanwhile in the bottom right, in the green, he's gonna be feeling pretty good after that victory. It's mini. So because of how the game unfolded, where Mini actually clutches it out, I'm sure he's feeling like he just can't lose probably at this point. And because of that, I think the chances of him going for 12 Nexus or Forward Gate are quite high. Your Forward Gate gives you potential to force Barracks into a weird build again, and clearly you can hold the weird builds. So that's one of the reasons I think it would be Forward Gate. And the second reason, or, or another reason I think it could be 12 Nexus is because if I'm Terran here and I feel like I was doing well with my Marine Medic and then I end up losing in the end, I'd be quite tilted. And because I'm tilted, I think another, a way to tilt the Terran player further is to go for 12 Nexus. But doesn't seem like we're going to have a 12 Nexus. It is going to be the forward gate though. And remember, last game we did have vertical scouting. And Mini is going to vertical scout again. This man has his lucky charm today. He's going to find Barracks first. And Barracks, if he's going for another gasless, 
uh, he's going to be feeling pretty unhappy about that since he's going to be getting scouted first. He may even get uh, gas stolen, but it doesn't seem like he had plans to go gasless this time. He's going to be going for 11 gas here, allow him to get out a slightly quicker vulture. And I do like his positioning of the racks. You can put a depot on the bottom right side and have some sort of semi wall. So it will limit the amount of damage that the Zillot can do. But already, just like in game one, that probe has done 30 points of damage to the SCV, and he's not done. He wants to deal some more. He's knocked down 15 from that second SCV. Make that 25, man. Man, the probes are so annoying. This time around, though, if we look at Minnie's main, he's actually going to gas fall off, so it's not going to be Nexus. He knows, because of the barracks placement, that this was not going to be the gasless expanse, so this was a good read from him. Now, that SV might actually die again. Is it one? No, it's two hits away. Need to repair it. Oh, barracks is not happy. Barracks is not... This is one of those games where, if it's me, actually, as soon as I kill this probe, I'm going too fat because F this Protoss, right? Like, I just want to kill this guy. I am so pissed off, <laughs> but I don't think Barracks is going to do that. At least he hasn't shown that he's going to do that just yet, but he, if you look at his gas, he has 100 gas. He does have potential to do that. Right, here, here comes that zealot pressure. Actually, the depot was not put where I was expecting it to be. There goes the probe. It does get knocked down. And the zealot does kill the SCV, but not before the depot completes. So, Mini is in a good spot right now. Oh, man. The Marines chase for some reason. But I was going to say, Mini's in a good spot right now. When you go for a forward gate, usually you're down like one worker. But he killed two workers, so now he's just up one or two. Vulture is going to be relatively quick. But look, the Zealots can hit from both sides. If he hit the bunker, if he hit the depot all the way up against the wall, they couldn't flank like this. But look at the control! Is this Flash? Look at that micro. He only loses one Marine. Oh, really good control from Barracks. He's going to limit the amount of damage. Only lost one Marine there. He does take hits on all of his Marines, though. So moves like FD, definitely not going to be that strong. So I think Mini can discount that as a follow-up. In Mini's main, there's no Nexus, at least not just yet. Okay, it looks like a probe has gone down to the natural. So it will be a Nexus follow-up. In the main of Mini, it did. I do see like a building that looks like it could be potentially double tech like cybernetics plus citadel but maybe it's also a pylon we've got the vulture running by there's no second goon out just yet SCV gives vision see a probe another probe does die okay that's one way to even up the work count he kills three probes for this that's great he was down three workers now he's even his tech wasn't really delayed his command center is going to be at the same time as the nexus so that was the move that barracks really needed to even up the early game. So well done from him. He does give away though, that he's not going for, uh, you know, a mine chain or anything like that. So the goons will have free range to push, push this bunker and rally across the map. SCV did sneak out actually. He really wants to know what Mickey is doing because based on what Barrick saw, he didn't see a Nexus. So this could be anything, right? Like this could be fast ET. This could be Fast Reaver, it could be you know, Double Gay Goon, something weird like that. But we know that it is just a normal expand with Robo coming in. Now I wonder what the Barracks follow-up is going to be, because, you know, in the past year, players have been rushing Armory. I think that's still, you know, a common follow-up, but more and more often these days. Oh, that broke my shot. That broke it is dead, but he loses a tank for that. But what I was going to say, more often these days, I see players going for more like a six-minute armory, which is still pretty quick, but it's not like a 430 armory, something crazy like what I see Rush do uh, a decent amount of time. In the main of Mini, we've got the Observatory coming, so it's not a rushed Reaver. I guess he was respecting the fact that it could be an FD, so he wants to get that Observer out. We do have the second factory coming down. So it is going to be, most likely, maybe three tanks with rally vultures. Wow, that is a lot of marines. I was not expecting to see that many marines actually get produced. And he's still going to commit to it. Despite losing his first tank, he will go for it. And I, again, don't know how many knows that this is coming, but he's got a battery here. 
However, with no Reaver, this is gonna be a lot tougher to hold. Look at the SCV sneak around. If he can wall off, the goons, oh, look at the double goon dies. Where's that SCV? If he could wall in these goons, that would have been that would have been amazing if he could have walled in the goons, but doesn't get in position for that. Unfortunately, Barracks bleeds off his one vulture. So that means that this push is most likely shut down. A lot of the Marines died, one of the tanks died, and he does see that there's a battery to help support the gun. So not surprised to see him back off, but it does force Mini to build a lot of units that he doesn't necessarily want to build. So I would still say that was well worth. And look at this, we actually do have a loop around with the Vulture, but unfortunately he runs into some goons. Now meanwhile, we've got the Nexus coming down for Mini. So third base, gonna be up and running pretty soon. In Barrett's main, I think that's double factory eBay. I really wanted that to make it. doesn't get it. There's no siege just yet. This is always dangerous. If you're this late into the game, 730, and you don't have siege, the Reaver could really ruin your day. But there's the siege, and he does get off a big shot there. Almost kills that good, actually. So what do we have for follow-up play for Barracks? I would say the most likely move from most players would be we're just gonna expand we're just gonna build up a massive tank count and we're gonna get our upgrades but we don't have armory done for barracks he is someone that really does like to flood factories and there we go it's four fact but i actually ex expect this to be six fact because out of all the pros that i've seen he does for some reason play six fact a decent amount of the time so i don't think that four fact is going to be the only amount of factories that he built. I think he may actually go for a six fact timing, but he may also just be building these because he did lose so many tanks. He's going to need a lot of production to take his third base. I also saw that there was a big building going down at his natural. I actually think that's another factory. I don't think that's a starport. Uh, it, that is a typical spot for the starport, but I don't think it is a starport. Yep, it's another factory. So it's five fact, hidden fifth fact. He's trying to make it look like it is just four fact normal, you know, more, more, the normal amount of factories where he builds a lot of units and takes an expansion. But this is actually gonna be for probably a timing. We've got Academy coming down also. So he wants to know exactly what Mini's doing. As Cruiser's pointing out, the Observer does not see that fifth factory. So it is a disguised build somewhat. However, we're so far into the middle of the game that Mini's gateway count is going to be starting to get ramped up. Also, Mini has a Reaver, so this is going to be really hard. It's most likely going to be like 8 gate plus Reaver in, uh, trying to defend versus a 5 pack. And most likely the Reaver and 8 gate are just going to win versus that. So, Barracks is going to have to really have a favorable move out here. Make sure he doesn't lose a lot of tanks. Because if he does, I think Mini will most likely easily hold an incoming push. Hey, okay, well, this is one way to start racking up some kills. He's gonna take off two goons pretty much for free. And he didn't lose any vultures and he didn't lose any tanks. Also, his tanks took no reaver shots. So all of a sudden, these tanks do have a lot of firepower and they are very healthy. So we've got basically even supplies because of the worker difference. It's 90 to 100, but there's a 13 worker lead for many. So army value is very, very similar. Oh man, a tank falls. Zealot unloads. You can see the snow micro here. Is it snow? Reaver gets off another big shot. Ooh, if he can unload, if he can unload and get some hits off. Oh man, all the tanks on siege. He doesn't actually lose that much. Wow, losing a lot of goons, actually. And the tank count is still really, really high. Also, those SCVs have been clutch to help repair or to help keep those tanks healthy. Just non-stop repairing on those tanks. But we now have double shuttle. But Barracks is on the high ground now. There's no turrets, though. So there is still a chance. Oh, okay, that's what we needed. Massive shots. It's for the tanks, and he knows that once he loses those four tanks, that that's it. He taps out, and Mini, he slams this attack and takes the series. Two to zero. Well, that was 
a pretty quick way to end the game. It really looked like Barracks was going to potentially set up a massive containment outside of the third base, or outside of the natural, I mean. But many had other ideas with those two bowling balls hitting the strike into those four tanks. And that means that he will be moving on into the round of 16. I did like Barracks' play in game one. I think the Marine Medic timing was interesting. And I even think that this timing with the five fact was going pretty well for him. Like, it was surprising how strong his tanks were as they were pushing across the map. I think if they were to replay that exact scenario, I think it could have gone differently. But it is what it is, Mini moves on, and that does set us up for Mini versus Light in the round of eight. That's gonna be an amazing game. And the reason I say that is because everybody knows that Mini, he's very harass oriented. He really wants to be in your face all the time, really test your multitask. But like someone like that just doesn't care, man. Like, he's just gonna hit his build, hit his upgrades. The chances of him doing a 5 factor are quite low. Uh, he's not gonna try and out multitask Mini, right? Like, he's just gonna accept that, hey, this guy is crazy. Just let him be crazy. I'm just gonna hit my build and expand. So I think that could be an interesting dynamic where you have two um, play styles just collide there. Uh, but that's our round of eight or our round of 16. We are now in the round of eight. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll be coming in with Rush versus Soma in the near future. So definitely tune in.